Hello everyone, in this lesson I am going to talk something about the history of dress and skirt silhouettes. Have you really wondered how to create a wide hip skirt like this? Let's go back to the history of gown silhouettes. During 1580, in western fashion, women adopted the tight-fitting gown, a type upon which fashion has played in varying strains ever since. The underskirt was called as the fartingale, which was a great innovation of this period and this was destined to play an important role which was ushered into France from Spain in 1530-80. The fartingale remained the vogue for about 300 years under various names like the hook, crinolin, basil and panier. The initial appearance was a stiffened pad stretched upon a wire frame. This was attached to the waist, giving width to the hips. The fartingale was followed by pannier. The pannier was flat at front and back and really wide at the sides. Next followed the bustle cage in 1883. Here the skirts remained slim in front and sides but the back ballooned out over a bustle framework. During the war, the silhouettes became much more simpler. This new style embraced femininity with rounded shoulders, shapely bust lines, closely defined waistlines, slightly padded skirts and full billowing skirts that hung just below the calves. Here you can see the picture of the earliest form of farthingale. Afterward, the name Fartingale was applied to petticoats mounted on hoop, iron, wood, cane or bone. The first pannier was simply large hoop bound together with a tape. Those of the second style were given the form of arches springing from the waist. The story is told of a French youth who saw two ladies approaching dressed in the latest breadth of pannier that was about 6 feet and the circumference being 18 feet. He understood the situation at glance. He deftly turned a handspring which landed him over and beyond them. Here you can see the picture of the Victorian style bustle cage which is flat everywhere except at the back. Here you can see the modern style of underskirt which has layers of hardnet stitched into it. This skirt is giving an A-line silhouette to the gown. You can use these can-can underskirts to create any kind of interesting silhouettes in your gowns. So here you can see a picture of a mermaid style of can-can skirt which is giving a mermaid silhouette to the gown. You should also be aware of the finishing methods that are used in hems of skirts and gowns. In this picture, you can see the lenga hemline which is neatly finished with a fabric facing. This fabric facing is fused with cotton woven fusible. This is the most modern type of silhouette that you can see in today's gowns and lengas. The skirt here is made out of double circle cut skirts and it has a cupcake pillar kind of effect. This can be controlled by using the right kind of underskirt. The underskirt that you see here has panels and every panel is stiffened with the help of boning. You can see the picture of boning and boning case here. Also horizontally you can see horse hair braid stitched all around the circle of this underskirt. Sometimes the circle cut skirts are also finished with pico at their hemlines. For this you will have to make use of a wire pico foot. You will also need fishing wire. At the hemlines you can also use horsehair braid.